What is up, everybody? Uh, welcome. What is up, everybody? This is Joe G from the Nest Maker Studios. I just wanted to take a minute to show you guys some of the new stuff for the upcoming version 5.0 and uh, take a little behind the scenes look at Mystic Searches. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is screen transitions and also a day night cycle. They both have to do with fades in this particular game. Now, we had a uh, fade script for Mystic Origins. This is nothing new, uh, but we had to rework it through how the, the tool currently works. So uh, I wanted to show it to you real quick. I also wanted to show you how it is going to be malleable in code to uh, handle fades and also how to handle the day-night engine. Uh, the first thing, uh, for those of you guys who haven't watched any of these videos before, this is not a particular game. What you're seeing is some of the Mystic Searches assets, but this is really sort of my mechanics playground. So when I'm testing out scripts, uh, I go here and I just kind of have these screens that are built to sort of, you know, have things to interact with them so I can test different mechanics of the game. So uh, this isn't really any particular game, uh, but what you're seeing as far as graphics, a lot of these are from Mystic Searches. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at both fades between screens and a, a four-tiered day-night engine. So you get a dusk and a dawn in this as well. Uh, and so, you know, we have these nice screen transitions that fade. Right, and if I walk around long enough, what's going to end up happening is the screen is going to fade to dusk, uh, right there, and then after a couple of seconds, it's going to actually fade to night. There we go. And if I go to the next screen, it's night. And if I come back to that first screen, you can see my monster is placed in a different position. That's because his position, uh, the monsters I had in the position or whatever, is different at night during the day for this. So let's take a look at this a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, let's take a look at the uh, setting up the, the fades. It's actually pretty easy, but what I want is for you guys to be able to write your own transitions, especially for those, those of you who are digging deeper into the assembly code. Um, if I look here at my script settings, in this module, I've got uh, some new uh, scripts that I've, I've got defined here uh, for screen transitions. And what they do, they don't do anything all that exciting. Uh, what they do is they turn on a certain type of transition type, and they, you know, they flip the screen on. Um, this is this is sort of a blank one. Uh, but there's other things that you could do that would change these numbers right here that would give you different transition types, uh, like this one being fade. And then when uh, when the game when handle fades is turned on, when that bit is flipped. Um, it runs the script called Handle Fades, which is this one, Mystic Searches Handle Fades. So this script here is sort of giving the instruction. And this is, if you guys remember looking at the, the fade script, it was much longer. This is much more compressed um, and allows us to save a lot of ROM space, uh, which is what we needed to do to work it back in. Um, this has a new macro called Darken Palette and one called update palette and there is one called lighten palette too and they all do slightly different things uh darken palette takes the palette and makes it drop down a degree lighten palette makes it go up a degree and you can set whether or not they respect the dark like the darkest value or they keep cycling um update palette takes the 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 uh bytes that are stored in some backup palette variables and restores that palette so sometimes it's great to be able to write to those backups and then update to that and that way you can preserve the uh the background palette and you have sort of this secondary one that you could have show up on the screen so anyway that's that's what this is doing this is just seeing a timer and when it sees a timer it, it when the timer goes up it darkens and darkens and if it gets to fade step five that's as dark as it can get because if you look at the colors on the nest basically what it's what this is doing is it's fading from here it's fading from here down and if anything gets below this row if anything gets below zero it's going to default to zero f it's going to default to black it'll keep fading so that like if you had one color that started here and one color that started here they would both be fading so then we get here and here and then we get here and this one would be in the negative so that would default to black and that's what sort of this is is telling it to do um and the same thing if you're fading up if you're lightening it'll keep fading this way until it gets to this value the third hex value 30 and then it'll stay white it'll stay on 30 if it's if it's a number any uh higher than than 3f so uh 3d i guess in this case so uh just to, so you have an idea what's happening with that that's kind of fun um seeing the the fades and the transition but you know the idea is that you can 
have what you don't just have to do fades you can make your own different types of transitions and i'm hoping that the community starts to generate different ideas for transitions uh for for their game um but the other thing that is happening is the day night engine and that all has to do with if i go to my scripts if i were to go to handle game timer edit uh, that brings up this script and what i have is a timer and you're going to add the day night speed to it and you can think of this sort of like hours right we've got like minutes hours i'm sorry these are sort of like the minutes we've got minutes we've got hours we've got sort of days all right so the day night speed is kind of like your minutes and if i go into my game you could set this as a constant or you could just look in your game info it's right here this is your how fast your your game is running and probably you know 255 is the fastest that, that, that you'd want that so that's the fastest it can be it's just one byte so um, but that's actually pretty fast and so what's going to happen is this this uh, variable game timer is going to increase by that much when it crosses the threshold when it gets to higher than 255 um, then this game timer low which is acting like the hours is going to increase and if that is flipped right if that has gone over 255 the mark 255 it'll um it'll tell the game okay if we're at day we got to change to dusk if we're at dusk we got to change to night if we're at night we got to change to dawn and if we're at dawn we have to change to day and so that's what that that's what this part's doing right here and then this is the script that actually handles um darkening the palette if it's dusk lightening it if it's dawn etc so that's what's happening there and also in in this i've made a co some caveats so for instance um, if your sprites are turned off, for instance, they turn off between screens, then the game timer is not counting down. And also, if in, in this game, if you have a certain inventory item, um, the day and night is frozen. So we're at whatever state that you're on, one of the inventory items that you can get in Mystic Searches is to prevent day and night from changing. Um, and the last thing that I did was create the, the uh, recreate the screen states. So if it's day or if it's night or if it's triggered or if it's untriggered, you can have different things happening on the screen. For instance, if I put night, uh, I could put the guy, the monster right here. So daytime would look like this. Nighttime, he'd be down here if I entered the screen. So we could test that. And we'll test a couple of things. First of all, we'll test just going back and forth. So daytime, so you can see that the monster shows up right here. But if we wait until dusk, it's going to take a minute. Um, and wait till night and I leave the screen and come back and now I come back you'll see that the monster is now at the bottom of the screen because he's observing the nighttime positioning for, for where he should be um, and I, I have a little sprite up here that's just denoting day and night it's just I use just two of the sprites that are that that are um, already in my tile set so it's a little heart if it's daytime it's a little crystal ball if it's nighttime that's not actually going to be in the game but you could use the same concept to have a little sun a little moon or have a hourglass or a clock timer we're kind of out of space in that area so if i look at my chr viewer like everything above here all this is being used because we're using all those diagonals and it's a fairly large sprite so we're having trouble finding space for that here but uh but um we probably you know for us, the, the sunlight does it. You know, you see the light, you see the dark, uh, it's day or night. So that's kind of cool. And the other thing that I can do in this game, like I was saying, is if I pull up this relic, it will not change from day and night. It'll stay on day if it's day, it'll stay on night if it's night. That's what that relic's function is in this game. Um, and I have not made it so that the relic um, stays on the screen if you leave and come back to the screen. That's just something I've got to work on. But still there still selected so anyway uh that was just a quick video to show you guys one of the things that's coming in uh in mess maker 5.0 uh why things work certain ways hopefully that show, gives you an indication of of why that doesn't exist now and and now will exist in the next version is retooling it to be a much smaller footprint in, in the code base um but yeah we're really excited about that and i'm really excited to continue to show you guys more mystic searches more nest maker stuff um, and you know continue to check out these videos if you like this video please down here there's the subscribe button there's a like buttons there's you know the little bell so you get notified and we'll just keep these videos coming and showing you what uh, you have to look forward to thanks